Hi everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland and welcome to a very exciting video. Um, so it's the seventh year of the Irish Readathon which takes place in March and the aim of the Readathon is to encourage people to read more Irish literature than they usually would during that month and it's usually hosted by Leanne from Leanne Rose and Aoife from Words of Clover and this year they've actually asked me to be a third host which I'm really excited to be able to do. So I have my Galway jersey on as I always do for my Irish Readathon first video. There are five prompts one group read and there are some buzzer and prompts as well which I think are really fun and um, so I will go through them one by one and give some recommendations. So I've participated in the Irish Readathon for the last two years as long as I've been in booktube officially and then before that I also did try to read a few more Irish books in March but I was starting from quite a low level so I haven't read nearly as many Irish books as Leanne and Aoife but I'll do my best and definitely I am trying to scale up my Irish reading so I'm way looking forward to uh, reading a lot of Irish books in March I'm hoping to take a week or two off as well and um, just to be able to really dive in so really looking forward to March on the whole. So the prompts are pretty similar to pre previous years I believe with one exception. So the first prompt is really easy um, which is to read a book with green on the cover and yeah if you do that you'll have participated in the Irish Readathon. Um, obviously it's really nice if this is an Irish book as well but um, what I think it'd be really cool actually is so there are a category of books that you sometimes find the books are about Ireland but not by an Irish Irish author as is the case of every country in the world so if there's a book like that that you really want to read this might be a really fun way of shoehorning it in um, so two that would immediately come to mind for me for this are uh, these two so the first one uh, Trinity by Leon Uris I read this years ago on audiobook and I just think it's absolutely fantastic I believe it's in the genre known as pulp fiction but I don't know it's historical fiction to me um, but I guess it's just really fast paced and just has great characters so maybe that's what drives into Pulp Fiction territory, I don't really care. But yeah, it's really the history of this family, um, several families really, um, from like the 1840s, the famine, um, right through the way to 1916 and oh, you would just live and die with these characters. The main hero is called Connor, I suppose he'd be like their archetypical <laughs> swashbuckling hero, but there's just so many other little stories in this, it would nearly make you cry sometimes. Uh, the most vivid scenes for me that will always stick in my head were uh, in a shirt factory. I was listening to an audiobook and oh my god those scenes are they, they were just so gripping and just upsetting and oh my god but yes what's really interesting about it as well is it's is set up more like the north of Ireland. Uh, it's a massive book but if you do have some time in March to dig your teeth into something I would highly recommend it. There is a sequel to it as well which I haven't read yet but um, I think I would really like to reread Trinity before I go into that. I don't think I'll get to it this Irish Readathon but I kind of have plans for it later in the year to reread this and read the next one so yeah I just really recommend it and it has green on the cover at least my edition does <laughs> I'm sure you'll manage to find one that does and the other one it's also historical fiction sorry this is going to be very historical fiction heavy hi if you've not been to my channel recently uh, I mostly read historical fiction but yes A Valiant Gentleman by Sabina Murray set kind of in a similar period but a bit of a different spin on it I suppose so Roger Casement is a man that's known for many things um, so he was Irish but he was like Anglo-Irish um, he was involved in like the British civil service for a long time what I imagine he's most known for in Britain is his humanitarian efforts in the Congo but why he's most known in Ireland is for importing um, guns to during the 1916 rising um, which he got caught for so two very different things there and then he's also this background that he was um, he was a gay man that there are these diaries called the Black Diaries which have caused much controversy over the years about um, their authenticity so um, yeah there's all that going on but the focus of this book really is the friendship between him and an artist called Herbert Ward and Herbert's wife called Sarita and it's just the most amazing book again green on the cover and um, so yeah I could go on and on with books with green on the cover but I just thought those are two nice ones to point out so the second prompt is to read an Irish children's book um, I don't know an awful lot about children's literature um, it being a while ago since I was a child and I don't know really 
really any children that I give books to but um, I did have some absolute favourites from when I was younger. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about, I can recommend these highly enough really if you have a young person in your life that you're looking to. Um, so uh, Artemis Fowl by Owen Colfer. I absolutely, me and my sisters absolutely loved Artemis Fowl books when we were younger. Um, so and I actually have uh, the graphic novels, the first two, um, but yeah I definitely start with the actual um, books themselves. So Artemis Fowl is set in this world where um, there are fairies, they're kind of very highly technologically advanced fairies that live underground um, unknown to the humans. But Artemis is this child genius. He discovers their existence by like t robbing this alcoholic fairy that he finds in Hong Kong I think and he eventually manages to kidnap a fairy and capture Holly um, to find it to extort gold off the fairies. They're absolutely brilliant books just so much fun um, especially like the first four I think maybe after that it went downhill slightly but yeah just um, really really funny. <laughs> Children's humour also I think they're very enjoyable, enjoyable for adults so um, yeah just really funny. Another book at uh, early in probably the first historical fiction book I ever read to be honest um, is Under the Hawthorn Tree and that whole series by Marita Conlon McKenna. Um, this book it follows these three siblings um, Eile, Michael and Peggy. I can still remember their names and I'm terrible with names. <laughs> I read it so many times. It's set during the Irish famine and unfortunately they're, both their parents die um, so they have to cross the country to go and find their aunt and uncle I believe. Just yeah the way they make their way across Ireland the people they meet and you can go on and read the other two books in the series then if you fancy as well though the first one will always have a special place in my heart. So another children's book that I thought was a bit different and I just thought it was interesting and saying I was curious how you could write a children's book about it and that is Chasing Ghosts and Arctic Adventure. So it's about the uh Franklin expedition to the Northwest Passage but it also has these two uh, children back in Derry and they're kind of a spiritual interaction between the crew of those two vessels these two children um, and yeah if you know what happens in that uh, expedition I was just curious how it could be a children's book but I have to say um, really was effective here and she actually has another book about the Titanic which will be on my own TBR for this prompt. So if you fancy something different maybe that'll be the one or if you're a fan of kind of Arctic books like I am that might be one to check out. So for children's fiction one thing I'm going to mention just because the fun fact I just recently came across if you wanted to go completely left wing or if you're completely stuck for some children's fiction C.S. Lewis is from Belfast. Who knew that? I didn't. I just I, I was planning a trip to Belfast and I saw things about C.S. Lewis and I'm like what is this obsession with C.S. Lewis in Belfast? Yeah, he was from there. I guess you always think of him um, being associated so much with Oxford. I never even wondered where he was from. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to go with that interpretation of Irish and you're fancying some uh, Narnia, which I, again, I must really must reread sometime, you can go with that. So the next prompt is to read an Irish book related to the number seven to celebrate seven years of the Irish Readathon. And you can interpret this any way you want. Um, the most obvious interpretation is to read a book with seven on the title or seven on the cover or something like that. I have to say I couldn't think of any books to fulfill it that way but another way you could think of it is to read a book that was published in like a year with seven in it so you could um, pick a book published in 2017, 2007, 1997 etc. Um, so yeah you might have to do a bit of hunting for this but to get you started. In 2017 The Break was published by Marion Keys so if you wanted to dip your toes into some Mar Marion Keys now is a good chance. I recently read my first Marion Keys and absolutely loved it and what's nice about The Break is a standalone novel about this husband and wife. The husband decides that he wants to take a break from his marriage and the woman is like well I guess that's a break for me as well. So um, the premise sounds intriguing and yeah it might be just a good time a good way to do that. Um, and another book then which I've, it has been on my TBR for ages is The Hearts of Isabel Furies by John Boyne which I've heard such good things about and follows a young man that's um, coming to terms with his sexuality in the second half of the 20th century in Ireland so um, yeah I just really must get to that and I've heard it recommended by many people. Um, a bit further back 2007 Emma Donoghue is a very um, popular Irish author and there's this book called Landing which is a about the relationship between a Canadian curator and an Irish flight attendant. Um, so yeah, I've never heard that Emma Donoghue mentioned before, but it might be worth the shot. Um, 2007 was also the year of the Booker winning The Gathering by Anne Enright, which I 
attempted last March and didn't get on with. It's very, very literary, but if you like literary fiction, it might be for you. A, a decade further back, in 1997, there is The Untouchable by John Banville, which is about a spy in that Cambridge spy ring at the end of the Second World War. So um, yeah, that's actually going to be on my TBR. And then uh, further back again, 1907, Playboy of the Western World by J.M. Singh. So if you're looking for a play and you've meant to get to that one, um, <laughs> It's a very uh, funny play in this little village in the Iron Islands and um, the stranger comes in their midst and said that he's killed his father and they're all really impressed and it all goes on from there so um, yeah that's it. <laughs> I saw an absolutely fabulous production of it earlier this year so I must go back and read it again at some stage. Probably not this Irish readathon but it was a brilliant production. Another way you could interpret is maybe you could read seven short stories um, so that might be easier for some people. Um, it gives you a little bit more choice or seven poems maybe. Um, so short stories my favourite Irish short story that I've ever read is Guests of the Nation by Frank O'Connor and I did an actual um, I did a search on Google and you can actually read this for free um, a PDF it's the first result that comes up if you Google it so worth a try if you're looking for a short story I know there's a lot of buzz around Claire Keegan at the moment and she has the short story collection called Antarctica I've only read three from this so far um, but I must say the first story Antarctica was brilliant uh, nothing to do with Antarctica but uh, yeah definitely maybe you could do a combination of seven seven short stories and poems um i'm not a big poetry person myself but uh we have plenty of famous irish poets um probably most well known <laughs> seamus heaney wb yates um many others so yeah i don't think it'd be hard to fulfill the prompt if you took it that way um and the other way i could think of interpreting it was a book that had like pages that had like a seven in it so you could re read a book that had like 70 pages um the one i found on my shelf for this my Myself is Dansk at Lunasa, another play by Brian Friel, which has 71 pages. Or if you're really brave, maybe you could try a book that had 700 pages. <laughs> so that would be a bit more difficult. But yeah, if you can think of any other ways to interpret that prompt, definitely go ahead and let us know. So the fourth prompt then is to read an Irish book in your favourite genre and I love this prompt because it, it's nice to try new things but it's nice to kind of stay in your comfort zone as well sometimes or just read books that are already on your shelves that you want to take off your TBR. Um, so yeah I'm just going to name out some examples here. I couldn't possibly list all of the books I recommend because it you know it would be here all day uh, even longer than this video is already going to be but I would say that some of the authors and books that immediately come to mind for Irish historical fiction Pull in the Stars by Emma Donoghue which is set in maternity hospital during the Spanish flu pandemic and also during the War of Independence in Ireland and it's just absolutely amazing it follows this one midwife as she's looking after these women it's such an enclosed atmosphere and I just couldn't put this down I was up to like three in the morning reading it if you fancy books that are set in the first and second world war definitely a long long way uh, by Sebastian Barry this was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2005 and it's one of my favorite um, war novels of all time and it's really nice perspective of Irish men in the war um Irish involvement in world war one was quite complicated and um, there was a lot of dri drive for um home rule going on at the time and another more extreme faction as well as like loyalists obviously and how they got on really a brilliant author I'd recommend anything by Sebastian Barry I've loved everything that I've read from him uh, Joseph O'Connor I read a brilliant book of his last year set during the second world war in um, Italy uh, in Rome where they were trying to get Jews out of Rome to safety and there's also this book and Stars of the Sea which I also read last year set on a coffin ship going across the Atlantic during the famine so uh, yeah definitely check out something by him there's also the likes of John Boyne the boy in striped pajamas another war novel uh the absolutist which is about a conscientious objector and the first world war so um plenty to choose from there and just so many more that i couldn't even mention them all i read a good bit of historical fiction last year in the irish readathon so i'll relink my wrap up down there because you'll find some more recommendations as well another genre that could be your favorite is like more contemporary novels whether it be like more maybe like chiclet um like marion keys i recently read rachel's holiday and brilliant like oh absolutely brilliant I read um a favorite of mine from last year Circle of Friends by Maeve Binchy was the last year or the year before but um Maeve Binchy a classic kind of chiclet um women's author um now deceased but um so much more out there in terms of Irish chiclet I think it's like a 
there's just so many I'll have some on my own TBR hopefully there are many more younger authors around as well I haven't read a huge amount of them but um, definitely Leanne or Aoife will give you uh, more recommendations for those but Sally Rooney obviously being the most obvious example for me um, I've only read Normal People but I absolutely love Normal People so if you haven't read it yet definitely check it out another author that's really seeing a lot of attention at the moment is Claire Keegan uh, Foster is my favourite I haven't read her new book yet but um, they're just short, short little reads and like literary but not too literary so uh yeah they're definitely you'll fly through them and Foster I always have to give uh, the plug to the film on Colleen Kuhn if you have a chance to uh watch it that would be a great watch for the Irish readathon although that's not a prompt uh, staying on the more literary side of things, um, there's a lot of this kind of Irish fiction. Um, two that I would recommend are uh, History of Loneliness by John Boyne. Um, a lot of books at the moment about the, sc the scandals of the Catholic Church in Ireland. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It's about Father Oran Yeats, um, who is a priest, obviously. So it's kind of told through the lens of him in the modern day, kind of struggling with the reproduction repercussions of um all the scandals coming out and then him looking back at the past i suppose viewing events with a different eye i just thought this was such an affecting novel and i think that's the only way i can describe it just how uh, your whole life would come crashing down around you and maybe how he was like willfully blind to some things um i just thought it was a brilliant book it's been a few years since i've read it but um I know there's a lot of Johns in this video but uh, I haven't read many many John Boyne books but this is a really really good one. Or more recently um, maybe if you fancy something like Audrey McGee uh, another book that was nominated for the Man Booker and uh, yeah a lot of buzz around this. It's about this island off the coast of the north of Ireland um, where the people there speak mostly Irish which is unusual in the present day and age and this Englishman and this Frenchman go out to spend the summer on the island and kind of the discussion around that and there's a lot about the troubles in it also so yeah just too many books to mention here if you want to book about the troubles um trespasses louise kennedy absolutely fabulous amazing can't recommend it enough was in my favorite books of 2023 so we really could be here all day um so maybe you fancy some classics or you're a big classics reader and i would highly recommend you to maybe stretch out to some irish classics um i they're not always very easy to think about or find um like apart from like the obvious ones like james joyce at uh, ulysses or dubliners which you know, are a bit intimidating to be fair so um but if you start looking out there there are alternatives available so one that i did a full book review for is the real charlotte by edith somerville and martin ross which is kind of a society novel set in like early 20th century ireland um at the last heyday of like the protestant ascendancy and yeah i just really enjoyed this i suppose you see the pictures of like um of them in their estates and things it's like a different world so i enjoyed this little glimpse into it and one of my favorite books from last year was a drama in muslin by george moore which i thought was absolutely brilliant it's about these two sisters and um, that come back from school and kind of their struggle to find love if they're interested in it which they aren't always um, they end up going to the season in Dublin Castle and there is also all this is taking place against the drama of the land wars in Ireland Um, so very interesting time politically and uh, yeah just a very funny book as well to be fair so um, really really enjoyed that one um, if you fancy some like gothic fiction um, there is Uncle Silas by J. Sheridan Le Fanu or his shorter version of this if you don't feel like you commit to a full novel The Secret History of an Irish Countess which I think I actually preferred than this which was a nice surprise um, of course if you think of Irish classics you will always think of Oscar Wilde The Picture of Dorian Gray which I'm actually in the middle of reading and I it's just brilliant I, I forgot how good it was it's about this man if you don't already know he gets a picture of himself painted and he wishes that the picture will age instead of him um, and he ends up becoming not a very nice person and yeah um you could also read some plays which i'm going to mention in a second so i won't mention them now um so maybe you might fancy some plays if you're looking for something shorter and there are some really good irish plays around I, I again something i've hardly dipped my toes into but definitely would like to um so an author i've already mentioned is obviously very well known for his plays and that is oscar wilde if you haven't read it yet read the importance of being earnest it is so funny <laughs> 
crying laughing um it's about this guy th these two guys that for various reasons neither of them are called Ernest but uh, they both wanted to be called Ernest for various reasons <laughs> in different places so oh it's just so funny um George Bernard Shaw is also another one to consider if you ever wanted to read Pygmalion he was also Irish a little bit further back then Richard Brimsey Sheridan um maybe you want a preview of Jane Austen July he was also Irish this play The Rivals was also really funny and he has many other plays I would like to check out and finally a more modern playwright I have to give a mention to is Brian Friel um so I mentioned Dancing at Lunasa earlier um uh, which is set in 1936 in County Donegal it's about these four sisters I've seen the film with Meryl Streep in it and I loved it so I'm, I must read the actual play and one again I've not read as well translations by Brian Friel I saw an absolutely fabulous production from the Abbey Theatre but I've never read it. Translations is set in 1833 in this um, Irish speaking town in Donegal and this British engineer arrives to try and make maps and like to do the ordnance survey for the area and he's trying to make sense of the names and anglicise them and it's about like the locals reaction to that um, absolutely brilliant play. Um, another another genre that I think Ireland really um, puts out a lot from is crime or mystery um, so there are a lot Lots of series the author that immediately springs to mind for me is um john banville or benjamin black as he writes his most of his crime fiction in the quirk novels i absolutely love them they're set in the 1960s in dublin so they have that kind of grungy tone about them they're very kind of uh, dark sometimes and quirk is definitely a very flawed character he's a pathologist um who works the, with the police to solve crimes and he also has a serious alcohol addiction problem and he has very complicated personal life as well i suppose as a, partly as a result of the alcohol addiction um so a great series to dig your teeth into or he has a more recent uh series about this other detective so john strafford um these two books are the ones i've read the secret guests and uh, Snow by John Banville. Um, I liked this one. I'm not sure if I could recommend it wholeheartedly because I expected it to be about something else. It's about if Elizabeth and Margaret, the two princesses, were sent to Ireland during the Second World War, but it wasn't really about them at all. So um, I preferred this book, which was more clear what it was about um, on the cover. And yeah, just great little um, crime books as well. Another author that I have read from is Ken Bruin. Um, he is a set of mysteries they're set in Galway and I've read The Guards, the first one, which I really liked, but I have haven't gotten any further in it yet so yeah hopefully that is some books from different genres to get you started but if you're looking for anything more specific um just let me know and I'll see if I can point you to something else so the final challenge then is to read the group read the group read this year is the Rachel Instant and it sounds brilliant um it's a contemporary book and the blurb says 21 years old platonically infatuated with her housemate and not platonically with her English professor Dr Byrne so different from me but I do uh really want to read more Irish contemporary books so um, yeah I hope you'll join us with that one so there are also nine cover prompts I'll put those up on the screen but they're animal food house books people trees transport fantasy element and stars so yeah but yeah I think it might be kind of a nice bingo board I know it says cover prompts but I'd say it should be okay if they just come up in the course of the book as well so yeah nice kind of little bingo board for your Irish readathon reading so yes that's it for the prompts before I completely lose my voice um there will be a discord chat which I'll link down below and there's also a storygraph challenge so I hope you'll join in with that so yes very much looking forward to it let me know if you if you're going to participate even just by reading one book so yes that's it thanks for listening thanks for watching and i'll see you next thursday in my next video